Okay, so let's review the, the T3 principle that is, is something that you have to keep in mind because it's uh, well, it's very important. Uh, something like the tools that you use uh, every time you need to do something, and we will see also in the next era which is losing here. So the first one is that. Uh, so the the key, in my opinion, is this one. First one is that. Uh, if you have a function, well, the first two, let's say. The first one is that if you have a E which is measurable, then, so E is uh, equivalent to either an open or a closed set. Well, just an open, because then you can be confident. It's like the finite union of intervals. So if you are in a multi-dimension or in other space, it would be it's just a finite union of balls of a, or, or is it is like an open set, very good open set. And uh, the, the, so this is the principle. The, the statement is that there exist finitely many image levels. So the statement, okay. I, I, and the thing is that the measure of the symmetric difference is less than epsilon. And then the epsilon is here. For all epsilon, there exists a choice. So essentially, it's a good one. Now, we saw last time, I hope you digest, but OK, it's difficult to digest, the Egoroff theorem. Which is, uh, okay, if f is in L0, and uh, then, uh, okay, let's say E is a set of finite measure. So at the end, uh, to be a finite measure is used because uh, you need to have a compact set. And uh, you need at some point to make the difference. You remember, you have to say that what is left is as uh, small as I want. Uh, and in that case, you need to have something which is a compact set, so let's say. E is in, a, is in M and the measure of E is finite. Okay, let's say, sorry, there is a sequence of C, uh, things one, and the Fn converts to F almost everywhere on E. Then, okay, there is a compact set so that the convergence is uniform. Okay, and uh, as uh, for all epsilon, the measure of uh, E minus K is less than epsilon, and uh, Fn converts to F uniform. This is a really powerful tool. Indeed, is the building block of, okay, of the third one. But let me say that. So this thing is only, I rewrite the, I hope I convince you, that is essentially you rewrite uh, this condition uh, in, uh, in the language of sets. Okay. And then, uh, okay, you have just to observe that basically if I, this condition means that uh, the uniformity means that the convergence, so if you say what is what should be the difference, I give you an index n. From that from that index onward, I have that estimate. So there is a, the, the other point was that how to find the function which given the distance tells you which is the index, and that was remember the observation that if you fix the distance and I let the index to go, go to price infinity, basically the, the set where the distance is less than that quantity converges uh, to E. So that was just the monotonicity. Then I use the monotonicity of the measure in order to say, well, okay, you remove something which is as small as you want, and then you define the function. You remember, there was this uh, only thing. Now the third, and it is uh, another thing very important. So it says the following, that if F is measurable, like the final set E doesn't matter because for us uh, 
the funny in a set E means that you extend the, as a constant outside and is measurable. And the thing is equivalent. So I will not care. So there, there exists a function G which is continuous such that. Sorry, I always forget to put the epsilon. Okay. F is equal to G, so the set where F is equal to G as measure as comb, let's say, uh, uh, satisfies the measure of, well, okay, this is an R, or uh, if it is defined in the set, uh, doesn't matter, let's say, so let's say this is defined in a set E. E minus the set is less than this. Sorry, and here is, let's say F is defined as Swiss. Well, of course, the theorem, it, it works, you extend to a constant, and then you put here R, and uh, let's see. So, the three things says that basically you're working with open sets, or G delta set. Basically, you're working with uniform, conver uniform convergence, and basically you're working with continuous. So we are not going too far from what actually we start. Yeah. Uh, for the, the third statement, do we need as for Igoro that the, the measure of uh, the set we are working on? No. Then the difference, so the question is good, but the, and the, I can let you feel why. I hope to make you feel why. Why is because the uniform, well, you can construct sequence that they converge pointwise, but not uniformly, even in continuous function of, on R. So there is no hope to remove, uh, so yes. this sequence converges to zero pointwise, but cannot converge uniformly. Okay. Why, clearly, this way, the continuous function is, you def so the continuous function gives you something on a, so on a compact set. Let's say it's a, I hope not to confuse, but the continuous function in a compact set is a nice space. The continuous function on the real line is not so nice. Well, it's still nice, but you cannot, for example, put uh, a north. You have more freedom. Because essentially on each compact set, that's nice. But then the limits, they can go whatever they want. So the, the, the fact that here you don't need the, the finiteness is that, well, I can, for any finite set, I can do the set is estimate with continuous, and this is indeed in the proof, with a constant, which is, is as small as a, I add the pieces. And so the, the, what is left is small because there's some ability. But then what happens is that the, the, my continuous function becomes worse and worse, you see. But it's still continuous, but going to plus infinity can become worse and worse. Question? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, I think this one is an exercise coming from the, 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 the second one. So I, did, I give you to this suggestion. The third one is an exercise from the first, second one. Okay, and so we need to prove the proof of losing. And uh, we need to apply the second one. So let's uh, take E. Okay, measure of E less than plus So it's a consequence of the first two. So, in order to have this object, I'm uh, sorry, in order to have the continuity, which is the ingredient here, hidden here, that uh, allows to construct the function G? In your opinion. The what? There is a, a hidden ingredient here, not so hidden, that allows me to construct the function G. Okay, a 
assume that Fn is continuous. So if n is continuous, okay, one is the okay. let, let me put the given one. Two, you say that f n you want to say find the sequence f n to f and f n continuous. Let's say almost everywhere here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's another point we have to prove. And the third ingredient now from the one of the f look at what is written here. So Fn is a continuous function which converges uniformly on a compact set. Yeah. Continuous function is a, is a bank space, so it's complete. Yeah. So 3 is a goal. F restricted to k is the limit, uniform limit. This morning I, I had some problem in practice. Uniform limit of Fn restricted to k, and then, uh, as I told you, the compact, the continuous function in compact set is a nice space. But then F is continuous. Okay. Yes, this is the line of the proof. Finally, we have to remove the assumption one. Assumption one is needed because I want to apply a group, but then okay. Okay, so this one is fine. Now one I can assume and then I remove at the end. Second one. Second one is the point one, I tell you. Okay, and then I do a drawing. So about point two. Let, let us consider the function which is the indicator function of p over x. And my question is, can this function be approximated by a family of continuous function converging to e? There exists uh, fn converging to E almost everywhere and Fn continuous. Of course, because uh, my problem is that, well, I have to simplify, I can maybe answer for the. Let's, let's consider the simplest function I can imagine, which is the indicator, in the characteristic function of set. And I'm sorry, I remember that we forgot this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but of course it's like in politics, no? The one that shouts more gets the things done. <laughs> okay, let's take this guy here. Or any version. Okay, uh, uh, what I know about E? Well, there exists, uh, for all epsilon, there exists a closed set containing in E and an open set such that the measure of O minus C is less than epsilon. Remember, this was one of the properties which are equivalent to the definition of measurability of E. No? Okay. Can you build up the function? We are in R, so we have uh, a lot of good topological properties. I don't know if it's P3 or T4, or whatever. If I give you two closed sets, there exists a continuous function which separate to this joint closed set, no? Which is one on one and zero on the other. And the function is continuous. Hmm? Yes. Urishon uh, lemma. Yeah. yeah, but it's one of the this is in matrix spaces, no? What? It should be in some, uh, you need some, in general, you know? Yeah, in general, for regular space. Well, yeah, okay, that's what they say. Yeah, T, 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 T,
class even when you ever ask more. Yeah. Okay, but in R, everything you can ask is okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so there exists, then, I define, then there exists a function phi epsilon such that, okay, phi epsilon from 0, 1, and phi is equal to 1 on C and 0 on O, on all the complement of O. So what is the difference of, uh, so let me say, what is uh, the measure of the set where phi is different than the indicator function, chi or x, the characteristic function? It's just the is a psi, right? Psi like this guy here, no? Because this is bounded by one. Well, as a mark, you and the but certainly they have that phi epsilon. The measure of the set where phi epsilon is different than the characteristic function is less than epsilon. And phi is continuous. Phi epsilon is continuous. Okay, so we arrive at least uh, certainly if I have uh, the characteristic function, I can construct this family of functions. Next. How to do for a general f? You cancel this principle because it's not needed. And what is phi in between? For example, well, here you can define what as you want. It's not the phi. You know it exists. If you want to define, I can say, for example, so you want an explicit expression. Okay, this is the two. This is the set, this is the complement. And for example, locally, let's say locally, so this is compact. Then I take the distance here. And now you define the distance from this guy going down with this, with this slope. So essentially, or oh, it's the distance, which is the max, let's say 1 minus the distance of x from the set c divided by, well, this, uh, let's say l, this length l, and then 0. Let's make the jump. If it is non-compact, clearly you have to rescale L going to plus infinity at any, at any point. So at any distance from the region, you just uh, take a different L and then uh, okay, make L smooth. So okay, now we have this family phi for characteristic function. I want to get the family for a general F. Because uh, if I so if I have uh, if I construct a sequence which converge to f and the sequence can be approximated by continuous, I have a continuous family converging to f. So I have to make two steps now. So I know how to do the characteristic function, and then I can use characteristic function to approximate f. Because uh, you see, I know how to approximate characteristic function. So what is the, the step, in your opinion? We have already done this. We have this property about uh, yeah, what's the, the simple function, simple function. So we know, so approximation by simple function. Okay, now we have to, okay, tell, if you know what to do, tell me otherwise I, uh, I proceed. Yeah, I do the slice, but then that was a finite, you remember, if it is F not finite, what I do now? You can do it too, okay. Or you just stay that here, there exists a family of simple functions converging almost everywhere to, to F. You want to use that guy? 
Because I always forget the statement. I, I <laughs> which statement I do? I, I because okay, I know how to prove one state, or I know the, the direction starting from the beginning, and then maybe I uh, I forget that I did already. So let, let's assume this statement that exists. F n simple. F n converging to F almost everywhere. Then. Let's use this guy. So Fn is written like the sum C n k over k indicates a function of some sorry some sets E n k. Now so I have the sequence phi epsilon. So let phi epsilon and k converging almost everywhere to chi e and k. When epsilon, this is convergence in epsilon, and this is a convergence in n. Okay, then the phi f n epsilon is the sum. C and K phi epsilon and K. Is that a continuous? Yes, yeah, it's a finite sum. I, I have no trouble here. It's a finite sum. So I don't care about uh, what is the any. What happens when epsilon goes to zero? To Fn. Because uh, it's a finite sum, I just passed the limit. Converts to F, which converge to N. Okay. Then I'm fine. You're okay? Now, by a diagonal procedure, I can find a sequence or oh, well, a slightly more general diagonal procedure. It's not just that n is equal to epsilon. You have to choose uh, for any n the correct epsilon. Just an exercise to find which and how to choose epsilon and n. You have that many choices. Now we can apply the Hegel of theorem. We can prove that this is okay, no? Under the assumption, this one is okay. Now we add the only, we remove that assumption. And uh, to remove the measure of epsilon less than plus infinity, I do the formula. Partition R into, OK, I take, uh, well, I can remove a set of measure 0. OK, so R is equal to, let's say, Z, which is a set of measure 0, union N and plus 1. Open intervals with integer boundaries. And then apply to each n n plus 1. So I obtain there exists a function g n continuous. Well, actually, sorry, the statement is that f there exists compact set Kn such that 
f restricted to kn is continuous. Then what I do? Because the statement of losing is that f coincides with a continuous function on a compact set, which is different to say that f is continuous on a compact set. In general topological sense, these two things is different. Because, uh, for example, I give you uh, f is continuous clearly in a set which is uh, uh, of isolated points. But if you don't have any topological property which tells you that you can extend a function from closed sets to a continuous function, a continuous function from closed sets to a continuous function, you cannot end up with losing. So this is indeed the last step is not uh, is not related to the measure, just related to the topology. So I have a function which is continuous on the union of Kn, because uh, you see Kn is contained in this one, so its union will be closed. And then I know that uh, in R, a function which is continuous on a closed set can be extended to a continuous function. Okay, so now to use, I don't know which one, one of the properties of R, T4, I think. Separation properties of R to find G continuous of R such that G is equal to F G restricted to Kn is equal to F restricted to Kn. Indeed, the, the last part is not really related to the measure. I hope you like that. Uh, I'm, I know that somebody, they, somebody doesn't like this way of doing the proof. I, I do the proof reverse, uh, in some sense reverse, because I, I, I prefer to address the problem and then you generalize until you get the, the full proof. But many times, this is my, what happens to me. You read the proof and even, your, even my proof. <laughs> After two years, I, can, I don't understand what, why I do that proof. Because uh, simply because of the, the what makes you to do one line in the proof is that you understand the key points and then you extend to a general case. But clearly, if you start in this way, okay, uh, m plus infinity, let's do let's restrict this guy and remove this thing, and then I need the convergence only in these open intervals. And then okay, let's start with approximation, let's do the thing. But the op but is not the way you construct the proof. The way you construct the proof is that you you put some line and you hope to prove these two these uh, pieces step by step. And so the, the, the composition of the proof is this one plus this observation. Once you arrive to this observation for this one, you believe the proof can be done. But you're not going to write it this way. You're going to write first you decompose, then you take a simple function, then you approximate the simple function at this step, then you apply a growth and then you extend. So you see, it's not really the line of all of it. But I hope you feel, in my opinion, it's more instructive than this one. But okay, this is personal. Okay, so far so good. Now we start to integrate it. Uh, question. Yep. Uh, we don't need to prove that the, the union of the Kn is closed. Ah, yes, uh, and, and, and indeed what I said is that, uh, yes, but it's closed. <laughs> because it's strictly contained in the open set. <laughs> this is still, well, you use R a lot. Okay, so finally, with these three principles, now we go. For, so these are regularities. So now we integrate. At the end of uh, le lecture six, we will be able to integrate. And even now, I'm not going to follow the, the route. So I ask you to, to suggest what would be the correct uh, integration uh, definition, integral definition, definition of it.
and then we do the, the correct definition. So if I have a function f which is measurable, how to give the integral to this function? I, I, I know that I hope not to confuse you, but uh, it's because you I can start as in the book you define this, then you define that, then you extend to that, then you extend to the other, and then but there is a reason, no? I, I really want you, you because otherwise just repeat the book, which is stupid. You can read by yourself, no? Not, uh, so I'm here just to try to see through the lines of the book why you do such a thing. There is one reason. It's not that just one event like this or then the other one wake up the next day change the world. So how to do that thing? In your opinion, what do you think? So now we have all the, the stuff. The stuff is in our hand. We have all the approximation, all the, the basic stuff. There are several possibilities, I tell you. It's not the, it's not the only one. What the, 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 the What's the Hegel's question? question? Hmm? What's the Hegel's question? The Hegel's question? question is uh, suggests me how to compute the, this symbol, which is the integral of f. Suggest me a way to compute that thing. Now we start with this guy and we will see that well there should be some something to do. It's not so easy, no? Something else for you? Okay, I tell you at least one diff, one else. Okay. So the integral is my opinion is uh, this area measure with the plus and this area measure with the minus. Okay, so use the I mean this method, this, this uh, construction to get the Lebesgue measure L2, so the Lebesgue measure on R2. Now, what would be, in your opinion, the definition of the Lebesgue measure in R2? We have all the, the, the line. Is the line is the same. You define the outer measure. There are other ways, but let's, let's see the our method. You define the outer measure, and then you pass to the limit. Uh, so, and then you define the sigma algebra is the one that, that made of measurable sets. So I need to define the outer measure. The outer measure is defined by you give me a value to a set, yeah. starting from basic sets. We take, we take the covering by squares and see the Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, you cover with uh, rectangles, but even squares is okay. Yeah. Or balls is okay, any set that you are your sum. And then you take the infimum, the Montis code, you get an M star. And then you define by, the stand, by this theoretical procedure which are the measurable sets. And then you discover that. So, this is a good exercise that we will now. Why, if F is measurable, this set would be the back measure with respect to L2? Because, uh, you know, I, I need to prove that, no, at the end. At the end, I, I need to prove. Okay, so we do, well, it's enough for characteristics. You know, is that, that line is the same. Let's do for characteristics. For characteristic function. And so I have a set, which is the characteristic function of a set. 
and I'm asking if this set is, for example, there is a, a closed set in below and an open set above that does the job. Yeah, remember, so we can take, for example, an open set whose measure is very close and this open set which co contains is clearly a measure which is uh, very close. And then you, you take a co closed set inside and uh, you just use uh, the closed set on the real line or the open set on the real line. So for characteristic function, the definition I mean, that the hypograph is measurable is equal to, the, to say that the set is measured. And then, OK, I do the same. But in both cases, there is one problem. Which problem? The problem is that I have a minus here. So is this area minus that area? If the, this area has measure plus infinity, this area has measure plus infinity, I cannot compute that. So I, I, do, I cannot have that a function which is measurable can be integral. I discovered with this example, but clearly the, the example would be that this limit is not going to converge. Okay, so this is a, it would be a nice way to do that, but let's stick with the other one. So the problem is that the, the definition should be independent of the sequence. It should be independent, so the limit, let's say, over n on the sequence. But then I'm in trouble because uh, well, I can make sequences which converge almost everywhere, but the integral does not converge. So let's say a distance 1 over n, the height is n. Let's say this is fn. fn converts to 0 almost everywhere. Is that true? But the integral of n is equal to 1, that is different from the integral of 0, which is equal to 0. I mean, this is what I want. Okay, so it's not so easy. Okay. And now, I, of course, one needs to think. So let's say, assume, so from now on, we do the integral for bounded functions. On, <coughs> let's say, on intervals or sets of bounded metrics. Okay, so you see the, pro the two problems that observed the first was uh, that well, the main problem is that this limit should be independent of the sequence, but clearly, <laughs> even for the most simple function, I can imagine having a strat sequence non-converging. I need something more. So I need the definition for a given for a, ch a chosen sequence. And this sequence should be the nice one, in the sense that you can perturb it or whatever. It, it gives you the right value. Okay. So this would be f. Well, f can be even negative. It doesn't matter. And now give me the sequence you suggest. OK, remember, we have already a theorem telling you that if it is bounded, uh, then I have, uh, I mean, the simple function I can construct. There are two special sequences, no? One from below and one from above. So there exists, uh, well, okay, um, the idea is that I take this slicing here, and whatever, okay, uh, then I approximate from below, whatever. And then 
far apart. But this one is stupid. is less or equal than, okay, two to the minus n, doesn't matter now. What is the total number? Okay? So now I can definitely define the integral over the set E of f is equal to the limit of the integral of i n and, well, clearly, since I define that measure, is the limit the inner of the side n. So I choose, well, I have a lot of freedom. Well, these are just my, my choice, please, but okay. Clearly, if I put any f in between, uh, every approximation in between, uh, it's okay, because uh, still it's one. Definition, operative definition. Can I extend the definition a little bit? Let's say this lemma is an exercise. The integral of f is equal to the supremum of uh, the integral of phi simple. Simple the infimum psi simple integral psi. Is that okay for you? Yes, because uh, well clearly each of these things here would be below one of these phi n, I mean the supremum you can take above phi n, below psi n, and the same for this guy. So the distance would be epsilon times the measure of e. Okay, so finally we have this. Now let's prove some properties, at least the integral for bounded function in bounded measures. So the observation is that first you rule out this problem here. Because essentially you take the, the approximation, they will be bounded. You are not allowed to take uh, an approximation which is very large. And the second, you rule out the problem of plus minus infinity. Plus infinity minus infinity, simply because f is bounded and it cannot happen that this area and that area is plus infinity. So it's still in a real number, there are no problems in computing that. Mm, equation? Yeah. Uh, we, s we saw that this result uh, is true for every f. For every f, yes. So we will be allowed to define the integral for every... The problem is this guy here. What is that? Is I did not write this guy. Mm, yes. <laughs> you see now what is the problem? Everybody sees what is the problem. So you understand why I answered, no? No. Okay, what is this guy for a simple function? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. because I wrote a symbol and a definition, but nobody asked me, what is this, this number? Did I write you the number? No. So you believe because you know the Riemann integral, then the symbol seems natural, but actually I did not say what is that number. Okay, so what is phi? Simple. So phi is the sum CK characteristic function of EK. What is the integral of phi? First, we need to assume that the EK are fusion. To say that it's. No, but. 
yes, you can assume, but no, the formula is the same. Oh, okay, so if we... If <laughs> because the internet is linear. Yes, oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, no, no, if they are disjoint, you can say that it, the sum of the product will see k with the measure of e k. Right? Yeah, but even the other case. It's linear. The yeah. integral of the sum is the sum of the yeah. integrals. Yeah. Then it's okay. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I mean, if you prefer, I can take EK disjoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end, it's the same. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, for this simple fun, just a trivial verification. Yeah. Okay, so what is this number? It is some plus EK with measure of EK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is measure of EK? That's the big measure. Well, I mean, what is EK is not measure of EK? Ah, no, no. Ah, uh, no. From now on, we don't use uh, we, everything is measure. You measure remember, measure. I told you last week. Measure. The, the, so the Vitali function exists no matter what, but the, the non-measurable set you need to require the axiom of choice. So the question is that. Okay. Is this sum meaningful? Is hmm? it converged or no? It's finite. Ah, it's finite. Okay. So the phi what do, what do we do in, in is the 1 for x greater than 0 minus 1 x less than 0. What is the integral of phi? 0. <laughs> no, this is not the extended Riemann integral. What is the, the integral of phi? Ah, it's not defined. Oh, 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 yes, it's not defined. The Riemann integral gives you 0 because yeah. you take the limit from minus n to n. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not one. It's not a fine. If e k are finite, then it's a Oh yes. And now we reach the bounded set. You you understand? So that's why that E as finite measure. Or phi is positive. Late. This is late, yes. And indeed, uh, there exists another thing. You define for positive, and then you define for general, like the integral of the positive, the integral of the negative, minus the integral of the negative, if one of them is bounded. Yeah. This is another problem. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I really like it this way. So, you open, uh, maybe we waste this lecture just discussing, then we can follow the line. But he said, let's define for positive. So give me a definition for positive. What is it in there? So f is in L0 and f greater or equal than 0. I want to define the integral of f. Yeah, so we approximate f that way. Which one? Uh, by this, say, CA, CK. This one, the integral of C. Uh, uh, Always oh, the, the, the log one. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. positive because s is ah, negative. Yeah. And then? Yeah. Yes. So the equal to the sum phi less or equal than f simple, the integral of phi, phi phi. Yes. This is another per correct definition. You can start with this one and obtain the rest. So you see, there are several ways to define the, the, the baby integral. No? Every, so they are all compatible. So the, the, main, the main thing, uh, in my opinion, the best is really to define the, the, the baby measure in F2, because I don't need to do anything. I just, every time you give me F, okay, I just take the, the epigraph, which is a perfectly defined set, and I integrate. This one is another, is a very nice also, because uh, you see, you don't care about plus infinity is already in the definition. And then you say, well, now I say that I can compute the integral even if the positive and the negative part have fine. One of the two needs to have a finite integral. And then I make the difference. 
and the most, uh, the, the ugliest one, in my opinion, is the quarter bounded set, and however, we follow the other one. <laughs> okay, so, so far, I think you, you understand the, the, the problem. Okay, so now we have a perfect way to define this number. The number is defined simply because okay, the supremum is defined in R and the, these two quantities coincide because of this estimate and E as bounded measure. Not the measure of E is less than the So I don't have any problem in computing this guy. I don't have any problem in hand. Now, uh, let's see. Tell me the properties that you want to have in the integral and we have to verify it. It's not like the Riemann, it's just a, a, a functional and we need to verify that it has the properties we want. So properties I need, I would like to have. Okay, let's make a list. Linearity. Ah, yes, that's important. Okay, let's assume I want to integrate on E1 union E2 disjoint. Additive. Additive. Okay, and uh, let me. Okay, if I replace with a countable union, remember, okay, if you don't see what I'm going to end to, think as a Telebeck measure of sets in R2. If I replace with countable union of these joint sets, it would be the sum. Remember that our assumption is that this guy has standard measure and this is bounded, so I have no trouble in the convergence of the sum. It's always the trouble. There's always a problem. You don't want this always to be careful. I think this is all. Ah, yeah, no, there is still one. Sorry. Monotone, yes. If, uh, if uh, one is above the other, its area will be above greater. And so the monotonicity. If f less or equal than g, then the integral of f less or equal than the integral of g. And everything is for the case of bounded functions in bounded sets. For the general case, one has the same relation, but have to be careful every time it doesn't want this relation. Because, uh, well, you don't know, no? Okay, so let's start with uh, well, which one you prefer. Right here, that the integral of f is the soup i less f in psi f less than psi. Okay, so we have the definition. Okay, which would be the easiest in your opinion? The last one. So let's prove the last one. And this is A, B, C. Proof of C. Up to you. Everything comes from the definition. I don't need anything else. Let me check if I forget something. I'm sure if we get something, but we choose phi simple less than yes, because of the, the for this guy one is as a set which is larger than the other, no? So the set of phi less or equal than f is clearly contained in the set of phi less or equal than g, and then the sum over phi less or equal than f integral of phi is less or equal than the supremum 
pi less bigger than g of the integral of pi and that these guys are equal to the integral of f because I know that for bounded measure, bounded set, these guys, they are my definition. They convert, they are is a number which is my definition. And this is the integral of g and so on. That's it. So easy. Exercise is not in no, Exercise. Can you find, I mean, if I forget to take bounded function, can you find something for which this relation is meaningless? <laughs> in the sense that one is defined and the other is not defined. Uh, probably goes in infinity. Yeah. So, for example, I can have that one is the one has an integral which is minus infinity, yeah. and the other is the opposite integral which is all the same, plus infinity. So this is okay. So what is the opposite plus infinity here? So yeah. f is defined, but g is not defined, or vice versa. So one has always to be careful. Okay, let, let, this is just a stupid observation. So let's uh, let's prove now the the b. Okay, how to do that? I think that that problem appears because they are not saying the condition on f such that the integral exists. Well, assuming the integral, but we are not knowing if. So far, integral. so far we work with uh, with set. Indeed, I'm not saying to set of f is bound. Yeah. And there is there is still one property that is something that if you have a sum, for example, sum of cantor sum of positive functions, then the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. Yeah. But we cannot state here now. No, no. When the integral of a function exists. Existed. Like, for example, on Riemann, if you have a continuous function that... Uh, but wait, here I say, if you have a bound... I, 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 the, my integral is a number that I compute. So well, if, if f, f is infinity. bounded... When it's infinity, we consider it not integrable, right? If f... Yes, indeed. But so far we have that. If f is bounded, then it's integrable in a bounded set, in the sense that by my procedure, I can give you the number. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I'm not saying... Yes, indeed, well... From the observation that the integral of positive function, we have already what is the integral of the, what is the definition of the integral of. Mm -hmm. Is the integral of the positive or the integral of the negative is fine? It's one of the two. Okay. <coughs> okay, proof of B. The procedure is always the same. You have to take the definition and verify for the definition. So the definition, so you have to verify that the integral of the union of f by definition is the supremum of the integral of phi on the union. This is the definition. So now we work on this guy. Is equal. What is the definition of an integral of a simple function? This guy. Sum over k, ck, the measure of what? E k, sorry, here is in R. Clearly, when you're restricted to E, I should say the intersect E, no? Like I extend to zero. Is that correct? There are questions here? If I'm integrating in E, essentially I'm restricting each of these guy only to E. Okay, so this guy is the measure of E k intersection, the union of E i. Next step. Power of the counter of the E k measures. Uh, should not we change this notation? I mean, this e by let's say a k for example, because we have so this a k. I mean, because this a k can be confused to yeah, you are right. <laughs> Uh, 
and now we are not short on swing balls. Otherwise, usually you say, okay, EK is some set and EI is another family of sets because the two inches are different. <laughs> just wrong. Now, additivity of the mesh. can do that, but I need some condition, otherwise it's false. The sum should be uniformly convergent. So for each phi, I know that that sum converges with a uniform way. Then I can switch. You know, I can pass to the limit inside the sum if it is uniformly convergent, otherwise I cannot. Is that some uniform convergent? Okay. Remember that. So the measure of the union of Fi, <laughs> that this is Fi, is less than plus infinity, and phi is bounded because f is bound. Then, then clearly the integral over fi of phi is less or equal than m, the measure, sorry, the modulus, m, the measure of uh, fi. There's a, I, mean, I, I need to use that gap, but you trust it if you want to prove by exercise because of the definition. But it's trivial, not the sum in each point. You can take, like I said, this joint and the sum is less or than n. So it's certainly uniformly convergent because this is uniformly convergent. This is convergent, it's a sequence. And so the convergence for AH phi is at least as the speed of n. So this guy is uniformly convergent. No, no, I was saying the M test, Y plus M test. Why? Uh, it's a result who, who, which says that if we, we have this kind of maturation and the sum is finite, then uh, we have the, the uniform convergence. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can switch. So it becomes the sum of the supremum. And this is, by definition, again, is the integral over fi of f. Okay. So, point A, linear. Okay. 
ไอ้ทรานสเฟร์คือโอเค exercise for me is the following if uh, uh, oh I think because uh, I think I'm going to to get a mess unless I prove an intermediate result So the way exercise is that the uh, integral of simple function is linear. We give it for granted. Because it's okay, it's just the linearity of the sum. There is nothing else here. Oh, it's a little bit long. I mean, if you want to prove it, but it, it, it's uh, <coughs> so how to prove the linearity? <coughs> Questions about this guy? You see how to prove it? If we assume it's more simple, then it's clear. Yes. We could exactly. If I have a simple which approximates A, F, I divide it by A is a simple which yeah. approximates F. Yeah. And vice versa. If I have a simple which approximates by multiplied by A, I approximate A, F. Okay. Then I need only to do simple function they have a so what so uh, let, let's see this point then so I when I add to simple function is like adding two characteristic functions so this is the basic so let's say I hope you're saying this one e, the integral of ek ee e plus ke e plus chi f you want to say that this is integral to chi e plus the integral of chi f Now you split, you know, this is uh, chi e minus f plus 2 chi e intersection f plus chi f minus t. It's what to say when you say that I split. Yes, but you see, it's good here because now, so now you compute this guy by definition is the measure of e minus f plus 2 the measure of E intersection F plus the measure of F minus E. And now, okay, this is a bilinearity, it is to divide the two times is equal to the Yes, you use already that. You, indeed, you don't need to compute anything. I mean, you don't need to explicit the integral for, uh, for simple function because uh, I give you 
t is the result for granted. It's linear for simple functions. So you need to use just the linear for simple function and the approximation to prove this guy. How to do that? OK, let's start with one side. But this, there is one side which is easier than the other. <laughs> the integral of f plus c is less than the integral of f plus the integral of t. You think less of no, 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 uh, is the opposite. <laughs> Okay, if phi is less or equal than f, phi prime less or equal than g, then phi plus phi prime is less or equal than f plus g. Monotonicity, the integral is this guy, and this is equal to the integral of phi linearity phi prime for simple. Now take the supremum and then you obtain. Oh, yeah, okay. The other one? Take phi simple less than f plus j and psi simple greater than... Yes, you take psi. <laughs> so if f less or equal than psi, g less or equal than psi prime, then f plus g is less or equal than phi psi plus psi prime. That's okay, it's the same addition, less or equal than the two integrals. So now take the infimum and then not f. Yes, we have to, to go a little bit further today. Because this chapter is quite long and. Uh, Corollary. Always in the assumption f bounded and e bounded. E bounded measure. The modulus of the integral is less or equal than the integral of the modulus. function you do it explicitly. It's always that the point. A simple function you do it explicitly. And so you don't need to use any result. Just, just find some of pieces and then it's done. And then you pass to the link. But here, okay, it's a corollary after, after you know that. But however, you, use the, you cannot use it for, for the simple function simply because <laughs> Otherwise, you, you are eating your tail, no? <laughs> it's a circular argument, you can work. OK, so is that OK, no? Because it's the monotonicity. So the proof is that f less or equal than modulus of f and minus f is less or equal than modulus of f. Now the important theorem that I want to do to today is the bounded convergence theorem. It's the first limit theorem in the sense that it's a theorem which allows you to pass limit under the sign of integral, our definition of integral. So the theorem, okay, as usual, f, let's say a sequence fn less or equal than the constant, and uh, the measure of the set is less than plus infinity, and Fn converges to F almost everywhere. Then, the integral of Fn, I can write in different ways, uh, this is right here, but let's write in the way it differs. Integral of F. Proof. Okay. What do you use uh, to prove this theorem, in your opinion? If you 
it's very powerful. Yes, but we, but you are cheating. <laughs> You didn't read. But if you are feeling with the theorem, something comes out immediately. <laughs> okay, I use Egoro. How to use Egoro? Indeed, I can prove something more. So, use Egoro. Which tells me the following. For all epsilon, there exists a compact set, let's say with epsilon containing in E, and Fn converges to F uniformly in K epsilon. So now let's compute what is the link soup. into two pieces. So it's the integral of E minus K epsilon plus the integral over K epsilon. So let's compute what is the, l the over K epsilon. Lim so the limit over the limit of what it doesn't, let's say, let's lim soup, it doesn't matter. What is this limit? For all n, sorry, for all delta, there exists n such that this quantity is less than delta. So it is uh, less or equal for all delta, delta times the measure of k epsilon. So it is zero. So I deduce the lim. Okay, so I can take this guy and I deduce this is equal to the lim soup of the integral of the e minus k epsilon f minus f n. But now this is bounded and clearly f is bound. So monotonicity, this guy is less than 2m. So it's 2m, the measure e minus k epsilon, which is equal to 2 and less or equal to 2, uh, I think less than epsilon. Um, I forgot to say k epsilon, the measure of e minus k epsilon is less than epsilon, is yes, equal to epsilon. This holds for every epsilon, so in particular this guy is zero. So I deduce. Now it is a limit. Is equal to zero. Okay. Exercise from this guy that use what I got there. It's slightly different, but not so much. plus the corollary deduce the statement. I pass the modules one more time to the side. Okay. I think we stop.